I'm teaching you how to build and publish your first site in Framer in three days. In part one, we covered the fundamental building blocks and today we're going to cover components, how to create them and when to use them. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside our Framer project and in the last video, we actually created this hero section here. If you haven't watched that one, I highly recommend it first. I'll leave a link down below. Now let's actually dive deep into components. So components are essentially reusable assets that we wanna use globally across our entire website. So for example, you might set up a button as a component because chances are you're going to use that button multiple times throughout your website. Another example is a nav bar and a footer because every page on your site needs them. You would actually set these up as components. And the really powerful thing about components in Framer is that they're global. So when you make a change to one, it updates everywhere meaning you can have a really consistent design system across your entire project. So to create a component, we can either go to the assets tab on the left-hand side and press on the little plus here next to component and we can select new component. Or if you actually have an existing frame on the canvas that you want to convert to a component, you can simply just right click that frame and go create component. Now you can call this whatever you want, but in this case, we're gonna call it button. Now you will notice that when I actually click on create, we'll get taken to a different view. This is the component canvas. And this is essentially where we can edit our component itself. So let's just go back for a second to our homepage here. And you will notice that now inside our layers panel, we actually have this button component created. Now, if I select that component down at the bottom right here, we now have a new field in our properties panel for managing that component or I can just double click on that component to open it up and to edit it. Now, the really powerful thing about components is variants, where we can actually set up multiple variations of the same component. So for example, a button, you might have a primary button, you might have a secondary button and so on and so forth, or different styles of that button. Now, instead of creating multiple components for these, we can just use variations of this button so everything can actually keep consistent within the button component. So for example here, if we rename this frame so it could be called primary, and then you'll notice when we have this selected, we get a little plus here. And if I actually click on this plus, it creates a new variant of that component. And we might call this secondary. And then what I can do is actually go ahead and update the styling here of my component. So I might actually go ahead and make this an outline. So let's actually set the border to be two and let's make the text black as well. So now when I go back to my homepage here and select that button component, you'll now notice we have the ability to switch that variant. So I might switch that to be the secondary variant and you'll notice it'll update here. And if I want to insert that component onto the canvas, I can just go to my assets tab and you'll find it here. So let's actually drag in a second button here and let's leave it as our primary component. Okay, cool. So I wanna have two buttons here, a primary and a secondary. So we'll select these both and we'll group them together inside their own stack. And let's set the direction to be horizontal. And let's also set the distribute to be to the start. Okay, cool. And we'll leave the width as fill there. Okay, great. So now we have these two buttons. But if I want to say update the text on these buttons, let's say I want to change it to get in touch, you'll notice it will actually update everywhere. So how we actually deal with this is actually creating variables inside a component variant. So for example, for each instance of my component, I may want it to say something different, but not affect the other instances. So to do this, what I can do is double click into my component. Now, if I select a frame, a layer, text on the canvas, and then go to my properties panel, you will notice that next to some of these fields here, we have this little plus. Now, when this little plus appears, this means we can actually connect this to a variable. So for example, the content, if we want to set that to be a variable, I can just click on the little plus, go create variable, and we'll create it as plain text. And we'll leave this as the title. We could also do the same for the background color here. So if we go down to fill, create a variable for color, and let's actually call this our background color. Now you'll notice that when I go back to my homepage here and click into that component, 
Inside my properties panel here, we now have the ability to set the variables for that specific instance of that component. So if I change the text here to be get started, or even if I change the color to be say white, which obviously isn't gonna work, let's go a red, then you'll notice that only that instance of the component actually has those variables. Meaning that if I make a change to the component itself, let's say we make the button as round as it can possibly be, it's actually going to update that everywhere. But because we actually have these variables set up, it's only going to affect that instance. But let's stay on brand and let's actually keep everything black and white. And let's also update this secondary button here to say learn more. Okay, great. Now, the last thing I want to do is actually add a little bit of interaction to my components here, because at the moment, they're a little bit dry. Now, since these are going to be buttons, they actually need to link somewhere as well. So I'm going to open up my component here, and I'm going to set a link at the top, but I'm actually going to set it as a variable, because potentially each button is going to go to a different place. So now for each one of my buttons, I can actually set a specific link here. So this is starting to look quite good, but as you can tell, it's still a little bit static. So I actually want to add some subtle interactions to the hover states of my button. So we'll open up the component canvas once again, and you will notice that when I actually select a variant here, we get this little plus icon that sits below that variant. And when I click on this, I can either select a hover or pressed state. So let's actually create a hover state here. Now I can design this to look however I want and essentially Framer will automatically animate between these two different states. So for example, maybe when I hover, I want the radius to increase a little bit. So you will notice that now when I actually preview this and hover, Framer will do that animation for me and actually animate between those two different states. So we have the default state and then we have a hover state. You can also add a pressed state here as well. So when somebody actually presses and holds that button. But for now, I just think a hover state is plenty. So let's make it that on hover, we just want it to go a little bit round. So let's preview this. Looks pretty good. And maybe the background color gets a little bit lighter as well. Let's preview that one more time. Okay, great. Starts to feel alive. And we'll also do something for the secondary button here. So we might do something similar. So we'll make the radius go to 10 pixels as well. But maybe for this one, we actually want to create a background fill. And we also want to make the color white. So when we preview this, great. This is starting to feel like a real button now. Cool. So now you'll notice when I preview this, we actually can have these components set up and designed in a way that actually has a really nice sort of subtle interaction on the hover state. Now you can push components quite far. There's a lot to learn when it comes to managing components, but we'll save that for another day. But already just by creating these as components, we've actually set our site up for success and allows us to have a little bit more control over the interaction. So in the final part of the series, we're gonna bring this all together. We're going to add some effects and animation to our site, set up our site settings and then hit publish. But if you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer videos like it, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new videos every single week. And if you're interested in mastering Framer, like truly mastering it, feel free to check out my A to Z course on Framer. And if you want the absolute best deals for Framer this Black Friday, head to insertframe.io for up to 50% off plugins, templates, and courses. But until next time, I'll catch you later.